at the end of what would already be a difficult day, even for someone whose business empire was just dealt a devastating blow by one judge. Tonight, another judge, federal district judge Tanya Chutkin, denied the former president's motion that she recuse herself from his election subversion trial. In her ruling, Judge Chutkin said that her comments made during the sentencing of two January 6 defendants were not evidence of bias, as Trump attorneys had claimed. The court, she writes, has never taken the position the defense ascribes to it that former President Trump should be prosecuted and imprisoned. Now, this comes, of course, after a New York judge's summary judgment yesterday that the Trump business empire was built on fraudulently and often comically inflated valuations of assets and now must be dissolved. How that happens, not yet clear. The New York judge today gave the defense 20 more days on top of the 10 days they'd already had to put forward a plan for putting the Trump organization into receivership. Meantime, the rest of the civil trial, which could result in a quarter billion dollar civil penalty, goes on. Whatever happens next, the judge's fraud ruling has certainly knocked down some of the foundation upon which Donald Trump's business was built over the years and how he portrayed himself. Now, here's the good news. I'm very rich. I started off with a million dollar loan. I built a net worth of over $10 billion. I would say that I'm worth more than $5 billion. I'm very rich. Hey, I'm rich. This is really taxing the rich by a very rich guy. The money you're talking about is a lot, but it's peanuts for me. I have many, many companies, hundreds and hundreds of transactions and many, many, many deals. A lot of cash and very little debt. Great assets, low debt, great cash. I built a very big net worth. It's a lot of money, but I have fun, and it's just a scorecard. Fortunately, I'm very rich. Well, perspective now from New York Times senior political correspondent Maggie Haberman, senior legal analyst and former New York chief assistant district attorney Karen Friedman Agnifilo, and former federal judge Shira Shenlin. So, Judge Shenlin, wh what is your reaction to Judge Chutkin rejecting the former president's demand that she recuse herself? A surprise? Not at all. She did absolutely the right thing. It's a well written, well reasoned opinion in every way. The fact is, the standard is whether the impartiality of the judge might reasonably be questioned. And she goes carefully through the facts and shows that no one could question her impartiality. As you already told, told us, these statements that he thinks showed partiality were made in proceedings in the courtroom. They're called intrajudicial statements. They weren't made on a TV show. They weren't made in a rally. They were made in court in the sentencing. And she was responding to the arguments of the two people who were being sentenced. She has to state the reasons for her sentence. She has to respond to the arguments made. And it's important that people trust the judges who make decisions. So she did absolutely the right thing in every way. And it's a good, strong opinion. I don't think there's any risk of reversal on appeal. And Judge, just to be clear, how high is the bar for a judge to recuse him or herself? It's very high. You really have to show that a reasonable person knowing all the facts would question that judge's ability to be impartial. And so the judge gives some examples of cases where the judge says outright, this person is guilty, this person should be in jail before there was ever a trial. So the example she gives, uh, or, or a judge saying in, a, in an interview, the witness there was a liar, and I know it, before the trial was even complete. So those are examples where a judge has expressed partiality very, very clearly. Nothing like that happened here. Karen, could Judge Chutkin's decision to not recuse herself be used as grounds for an appeal if the former president is convicted at trial? Well, he certainly can try, but I agree with Judge Shinlin that this is a this is appeal proof. This particular decision. She also goes on to cite a case from uh, Watergate times, which was very similar, where the judge there was uh, sentencing multiple people in that case, and actually said talked about those particular uh, defendants, uh, and actually talked about gave names of people she thought should be prosecuted. And there, the entire D.C. Circuit, all the judges uh, upheld that decision. So I think she's pr uh, completely appeal proof and will be fine. Maggie, let's talk about the other judge. It comes, uh, you know, just yesterday, New York State judge found the former president and his adult sons liable for fraud, canceled the Trump organization's business certification. How much does that cut to the heart of the former president's identity? 
And there's two questions here, Anderson. One is the legal question and what it means in terms of the, the reality of this decision. And I think that Trump's lawyers have made very clear in court that they're not quite sure what that looks like. But in terms of what the judge's words were about the former president and about uh, the reality that he created for himself, he was very clear, which was that Trump was creating something of a fantasy world. And this is an image of, of a, as a successful businessman, you know, fabulously wealthy person who that Trump has honed for a very long period of time over many decades used it to thrust himself into pop culture, used it to uh, push himself into politics, used it to become, a, you know, a best-selling author and then a reality television star. And look, Anderson, he is much wealthier than many Americans. There's no question about that. But exactly what he is worth has always been something of a question. Some reporters had pulled back the curtain, Tim O'Brien at Bloomberg you know, while he was at the New York Times, my colleague Sue Craig, Russ Butner, uh, and some others had worked on it. But, but this is the first time he's been held to account in this kind of way. And, and Judge Shenlin, the, the trial for the New York fraud case, that's set for Monday. Can you explain what that would entail, given the judge has already granted a partial summary judgment? I mean, how long could appeals drag out that case? Oh, the appeals can go on for a long time. In fact, I'm sure they're going to appeal his recent summary judgment opinion, and there could be a stay. So if they go to the appellate division as fast as they should the remaining days this week, they may get a stay of Monday's trial because there's a lot of things that are that are uncertain now as to what is left to be tried. Surely they have to try the damages. There are other charges there that are not part of his summary judgment opinion. So far, the opinion really dealt with two major properties in New York City, but there's properties all over. There's properties outside New York, and it's unclear whether the ruling can reach those properties eventually too. So I don't know if the whole empire is going down or just the New York portion. I don't think anybody knows yet. So things are unclear. Yeah, I mean, things are unsettled. Karen, I mean, the, the, the process of dissolving some of Trump's properties, it, 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 I mean, it's incredibly confusing. Would he have to liquidate, I mean, most of his New York holdings or New York City holdings? Could he try to move his, you know, move them to an umbrella company, the Trump Organization, to another state? Well, he's under a monitorship right now with a former judge, uh, former federal judge Barbara Jones, and she has been overseeing the finances and making sure that all the paperwork and everything is is um, remains accurate. And she has found that during the pendency of this case, that he's continued to uh, misrepresent his information and his assets. So he can't really do that without her permission. And the other thing that this decision did today is it said that any licenses he has in New York, including his LLCs, though he can no longer have those certifications and those licenses. So many things in addition to real property are going to be at risk here and dissolved. And so I think it's just a matter of when it happens, uh, because this judge gave 10 days and then now another 20 days. And then let's see if an appellate court stays the execution of this. But in the meantime, he can't do much because of former Judge Barbara Jones, who is uh, very much in charge of making sure that he doesn't do things like that with his assets. And Maggie, the former president is skipping the Republican debate, which happens later tonight. The more legal problems he has, does it make him, you think, less interested in facing his opponents? I mean, not that, I mean, he certainly didn't get harmed by not being there the last time in terms of polls. I don't know. I don't think that appearing at the debate has much to do with his mindset at the moment. I think that they don't see advantage on his campaign because he is so far ahead in the polls. I do think, Anderson, that you would see some of his rivals in the Republican primary, certainly someone like a Chris Christie, use this ruling from the New York judge to try to attack Trump as uh, as, as not what he says he is. And I think that you will hear that in the coming days. I think the question is going to be how Trump is processing that himself and how he handles this going forward, because to go back to the earlier question, this company, Trump Tower, these are central to his identity and how he sees himself. And I think that seeing that potentially gone it, it is going to have real ramifications just for him personally and, and psychologically. And, and Megan, I mean, is it clear, does he have $250 million if that was a, an actual penalty that, that the company was to pay? 
I'm not sure how liquid he is at the moment and whether he could pay that. I don't know whether they will get that in damages. Um, you know, he, he, they have had a, a, ca a couple of cash infusions with some sales recently. One, the D.C. hotel, one, the, the uh, license on the Bronx golf course, uh, you know, among other ways that they get cash. But this is obviously a big question is what his actual assets are. His folks have insisted that he has a lot of money. Um, we will find that tested, I think, if this goes ahead. Again, it could, he, they could win on appeal. Yeah. His lawyers have made a ton of arguments. Are Arguing this is not legal. We'll see how it plays out.